Holly, how is Toronto these days? You know, me too. It has been a long winter and a long spring. We are still in lockdown. We've been in a quite serious lockdown since the beginning of December. Um, I think after some arrogance compared to you guys down south, we have not had it very good. Our cases are rising and our vaccine program generally has been really, really slow. As it stands now, even despite not having done a lot uh, lockdown wise, things are kind of getting back to normal here. That's a crazy thought because we all saw those photos. We all teased lovingly you Floridians and silly people gathering close together while we were social distancing, taking it really seriously. My parents who are both in their 60s have only had one. Prime Minister Trudeau has promised us a one dose summer. I think it's supposed to replace hot girl summer, I'm not sure, but we're hoping that all Canadians should have access to a vaccine by the end of summer and then getting fully dosed by the fall. Even though Canada is catching up to the US in terms of one dose, we are still way behind in terms of the number of Canadians who are fully vaccinated. Are your parents fully vaccinated? Yeah, my parents are fully vaccinated. My dad was lucky enough to get vaccinated like early on and my mom just finished her second dose. And now we are having this problem of there's really not enough people who want to be vaccinated. So tell me what are some of the craziest things governments and businesses have been doing to sort of bribe people to get vaccines? I got a list for you. Okay, so it's, and it is businesses and governments, right? So it all started, I believe, months ago with Krispy Kreme. We'll give you a free donut if you prove that you got a shot. We've had local governments giving out free beer to millennials who get vaccinated. Ohio is gonna put people into a lottery to win a million dollars to get vaccinated. It's kind of crazy to think about. And like, give them to us, I will drive. I think when we're so still in need and so far away from, you know, socializing, being outdoors with people is technically not allowed in my province right now. I just, it's hard for me to fathom needing to be bribed to get a vaccine. Another interesting thing in the US with how quickly we've been moving forward with vaccinations is now 12 year olds can get vaccinated. What is it like being in Toronto and seeing this? I know that we've approved vaccines for 12 to 15 year olds and I'm sure some have maybe across provinces in unique circumstances, but they are certainly not the majority. So the idea of you guys being that far ahead of us is crazy. I mean, we're neighbors, we have, I have friends who have been to the US for workshops, for example, and they're staying a couple extra weeks to get a vaccine on their way. So we're really seeing vaccine tourism, I think in the reverse from what we're used to, right? We think of Americans, American politicians even, coming up north to get insulin and other prescription drugs, and that has totally been flipped. On that note, what kind of vaccines do you guys have? Because here we have three, and you know, you can kind of, it's at the point where you can really pick and choose. And you know, I know friends who drove across Massachusetts to get Johnson & Johnson because they were like, I'm just getting one shot, can't deal with two. Other friends who like, I'm waiting it out for Pfizer. And there is this sort of selection that you're allowed to have here. It's very much a privilege. So what's it like in Canada? I don't think people are getting choosy like you guys. We don't have all the kind of brands to pick from. I would just roll my sleeve up and take whatever thing a doctor gave me. Okay, so after all that, I think I'm gonna give the US a B minus with our vaccine rollout, but I'm docking some points for how we reacted to COVID initially. I would give Canada a C. I'm sorry, Canada, I love you, but it's just been too slow with the vaccines and it's been a very long lockdown.